Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanolades at Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury333, and this last match is going to be between Capricious and Failthas on Desert Needles Mall. So this is not a map I, sh I think I've seen recently, but well, relatively recently. Wait, Capricious going for Life Eagles. It's a large map, very feasty. Like you get 50 metal in your main base, pretty much. Like 10 right here, 10 right here, and the 10, uh, 30 here. Okay, 40 metal in your base. With your commander and a couple other straight metal extractors. Yeah, it's really easy to get a lot of money in this game, in this match. Fail thoughts going for a gunship start, which is probably what they were talking about. So Capricious, since they're playing light vehicles, they have access to crashers and slashers. And th crashes are really the way to go at this point. I mean, the thing is, slashers for defensive are not bad. But when you're playing light vehicles on a flat map like this against gunships, you're going to want to go crashers just to make sure that you can control the space. Because light vehicles have speed, and crashers are a lot faster than slashers. Both because crashers can fire while moving, and because they're just faster. Their raw speed is faster. Like crashers, I believe, are... Yeah, and they're being built already. Wow. Yeah, because the scout would have just seen it. So that's... Yeah, the scouting dart. So Capricious is well aware of Felitas' tricks. But yeah, so the crasher there, compared to the slasher, the slasher... 84 elements per second compared to 111. Crashers... About... Three, well, about a 33% times faster or so. Or 30, not times. 30% faster or so. That was a really weird way of phrasing it. But yeah, 30-ish percent faster. But they are also able to fire on the move. So it makes them even more, even more of a rapid response unit. Problem, of course, being that they're expensive. Compared to slashes, which are like 140. Crashes being 220. Still, that's... That's a really good fast response, though. Like, one Crasher out, because right as Capricious, right as Felitas attacks, Capricious did take a lot of damage, but is rebuilding that. Some Reflame to work with. And yeah, Felitas does have their factory, but they also have now Crashers to contend with. And having to deal with that, which will probably not be the only Crasher, and no, it's not. Capricious building more Crashers. So Capricious will basically be able to set up an entire anti-gunship force right out of the gate, Causing Failthos to have to switch. So Failthos, yeah, they have a bit of an economic advantage from that raid, but that's going to be nullified by the forced ground switch. Probably the light vehicles, maybe the heavy tanks. I don't know. Maybe they're going to keep going gunships. It looks like they're just going to keep going gunships. Like, anti-air be damned. They're going gunships all the way. They want to see how far they can push this, how far they can push the crashers, maybe even overwhelm the crashers with sheer numbers of banshees. I kind of doubt it. I mean, crashers, as we can see, two-shot banshees. So it's not going to be easy, especially now we have one Banshee against two Crashers. This is going to go nowhere. Oh, it's not two shot. Oh, I misinterpreted that. It's actually three shot. Okay. Maybe they have a chance. 290 damage. Yeah, 290 damage against 860 health. But still, get a little bit more, and that's going to be enough to just completely wreck Banshees. On the other hand, though, the Crane doing a nice job Ninja expanding. Fail Thoughts also expanding the main, or the natural expansion area. Capricious is getting their economy up too, but the problem is Capricious' commander was much further behind. Did spend a fair bit more money on Morph... Uh, spent the same amount of money on Morphin. It's level 2 there, level 2 for Felthos. So, about the same amount of money on Morphin, but Felthos being a bit more efficient with their walking. Their commander is further up front. Capricious had the commander around the back, and is just now walking it up to the, this little area. So, overall, Felthos' expansion has been a lot more efficient. But on the other hand, Capricious is able to get rid of Felthas' army, and Felthas pretty much does have to ground switch at some point. More cranes coming up, though. Felthas not going to give up the gunship game. They're not going to give up the gunship dream. They're going to keep going with that as long as they can. And why wouldn't they? I mean, yeah, sure, the Banshees aren't doing much, but these cranes are giving Felthas all the economy. And by the time Capricious realizes it, Felthas, their plan from the looks of it, is just to have enough static defense that... Capricious can't really do much. At this point, though, Capricious and Felthas are pretty neck and neck economically. Like, despite the inefficiency with Capricious' commander, it's still working out pretty well. And Scorch is coming for scouting, not able to do a whole lot of, well, not able to do any damage, sadly. But that does let them know oh, hey, I think, I think Capricious does know Felthas' commander is up front there. Which does mean, of course, that Capricious will probably try to send a bunch of slashers, sorry, a bunch of scorchers down there and get rid of Felthas' commander. 
Because, hey, if you have a commander right there, send in four Scorchers and kill it. Given that that's Feltas' big expansion force, apart from the Cranes, that the thing that Capricious knows is that Feltas' commander is going out and expanding a lot. That's what Capricious knows. What Capricious does not know, of course, is the Cranes, but that's not something they're going to likely know for a little while. However, knowing about the commander is very important. I think once, once Capricious sees that these expansion areas have not been taken over to the east, then it'll be obvious that Felthas is expanding elsewhere, and I think Capricious will start looking for ninja expansions at that point. Probably start to look over to the northwest, maybe to the southeast. Northwest, of course, being the correct option, but then again, Capricious has no idea. There's no reason to suspect one way or the other which one it'll be. But the real question will be, of course, are they going to suspect something? And it looks like, yes, they're suspecting north, and they're probably going to check northwest soon after. Felthas, do they know that this is coming? No, they have radar, but the radar is not in a great spot. It has a lot of shadow. If the Scorchers come in through the western side, though, which they will of this little oasis area, and they will, they will be spotted. So Feltos will be aware of the Scorchers coming in rather briefly, but yeah, there's the Scorcher radar mark. And yes, Capricious does check that they check the northwest first. Good call. Good call. Very good call. So that goes. Capricious will have a very solid economic advantage, as it is Capricious has an economic advantage. Expanding in their little main base area as well as the front. And Capricious also knowing where Feltas' commander is. Feltas going for a hovercraft switch. A few daggers come out at the start, which is definitely a good choice. I mean, Light Vehicle does have a tricky time dealing with daggers. We did see before, well, in an earlier match. But at the same time, with the Raptors coming out... Hmm. I mean, like I said, it's tricky to deal with, but the thing with daggers is that they have high alpha, but once they shoot, they haven't got much else. And if the Ravagers eat the shots, I think it takes five or six dagger shots to kill a Ravager. Because each dagger is, what, 110? Yeah. So, the Ravager is not even five or six. It takes, like, 17 dagger shots or so to get rid of a Reaver. Or sorry, a Ravager. So, those... Yeah, it's just 17 exactly. So, 17 dagger shots to get rid of a Ravager. And, yeah, there is the ball up thing and the line splash. But they'll probably end up wasting their shots on a single Ravager, maybe hitting an extra one if they're lucky giving the Scorchers plenty of time to rush in and either kill them or bypass them completely and just not care. Either way, it's going to work out well for Capricious right now. I'm a bit surprised that Feltas didn't go for either Halberds or Scorchers, I guess, but mainly Halberds, just to punch through the defenses that Capricious, well, you'd think would have, and actually does kind of have. Halberds would do really well, though, here. There's a naked area in the back. There's frontal defenses. Capricious does have their front kind of defended, but they don't have anything else defended. So Halberds would be a beautiful option here for Felthas. And then Capricious does know about the Northwest expansion, but seems to be relatively unconcerned. More concerned about keeping a contain down, making sure that Felthas does not take any more ninja expansions, rather than trying to deal with this expansion right now. That is not the hill that Capricious wants to die on, and I kind of agree with that. It's six metal, which is not bad, but with six Lotuses there, it's probably a lot easier just to stay up, keep pressure on the front lines, deal with everything that way. Especially with all the Ravagers up front, and the Scorchers, there we go, picking off the stray, stray daggers. After the daggers fire off their shots, what else is there? This is not. A, this is a really good combination, actually. I mean, the mace, that was presenting a problem, but now that the mace is gone, the only problem now is a Lotus, and the Scorchers can be very easily replaced. Ravagers not so much, though. Some care does need to be taken here. The Ravagers can help, but at this point, they should probably retreat just to be able to regroup. Like, retreat, regroup. Get some reinforcements with more, more Scorchers and Ravagers at this point. Still, there they are. Okay, they are starting to retreat. And the second Ravager group coming in here doing a bit of damage too. But honestly, it's just really the overall pressure. The thing is, you don't want the Ravagers to die. If the Ravagers die, I think Felthos would get the, the idea that they could push out. And more Ravager reinforcements are coming in. So it's not all lost, but Felthos is reclaiming very quickly. And this is kind of what I meant. They need to retreat. Because Feltos just gets that much more metal. Because Feltos is going to reclaim during combat. Because that's what that's what you do. Whenever you can. Capricious is actually with frontline... Okay, frontline caretakers. Good plan. Seeing they're being used for repair. But of course, reclaim will come up soon after. So, very wise there. It's a tricky thing to do. I've actually kind of given Aquanim a bit of a hard time sometimes for relying on caretakers a lot. But that difference is that they rely on it rather than just building them. Also, Capricious having car repairs and nanoliths time too. So they have 20 build power on there. Each of these takes like 12 seconds to build. 
So it's not that big of a deal in this case. But yeah, it's working out too just because it there was a good setup for it. They seem to be more for repair. The reclaim is there. And proxy heavy tank factory. Ouch! Okay, we're going to be seeing from this point... I'm hoping we see either Pillager or maybe Banisher. Or Tremor. Frontline forces are relatively well spoken for. I mean, we have Ravager and Level are pushing down. There's not a big problem there. But when it comes to dealing with heavy defenses or dealing with the larger groups... And Levelers are okay for that, but there aren't a whole lot of them. So I could see Pillager for that and just softening up everything. Well, that's where Tremor comes in. The only problem with Tremor, of course, being that it... I don't know, Tremor evens out the ground, so that, that's fine. And instead, no, it's a Goliath. Also a good choice. But, I mean, the bad choice would have been Reaper. Reaper would have been completely redundant in this case. There are enough Ravagers. The Reapers... Reapers are primarily useful at dealing with emplacements, like dealing with heavy defenses, or occasionally dealing with really slow units. They're not great at dealing with faster armies like this. The Ravagers are fine. The Ravagers are really quick. The projectile's not that fast, but it's firing rapidly enough that it's not that big of a deal. The Goliath, on the other hand, they have the slow beam, and they have, I believe, a relatively rapidly moving shot. 310 almost per second. Yeah, that's relatively rapidly moving compared to what's the Ravagers? What, 100? 215, okay. Well, it's still relatively rapid. And the problem is the Reaper, which is at 255. Oh, Reaper's actually still... Okay, so Goliath, maybe not that fast. And there's the Tremor. Okay, that's the unit I wanted to see was the Tremor. Everything else is kind of an interest thing. Like, okay, we're going to see something that works well here. Goliath's okay. Especially given that the rest of the frontline forces have gone back. Now I totally see a good, good use case for the Goliath here. But we are seeing the Ravagers moving back because they want to get rid of the Northwest Expansion. Because they can. There's enough forces here. Unfortunately, this is not the path they want to take. Bit of a pathing failure, I'm afraid. Because that rock is going to basically stop this entire force. Or make it come through slowly enough that the Lotuses can deal with it, no problem. At the same time, the Goliath over here trying to get rid of everything. Not doing a terrible job, but still having a hard time with all the, sla all the scalpels. Still, the slow beam is going to be the big thing. And on top of the Gauss... Okay, the Gauss turrets are a really good idea here. Just line splash on top of everything. And given the Gauss turrets, the what, 400? Yeah, 400. No, they're definitely valuable. I would... Let's see, what's the range, though? Oh, yeah, that's why. I'm thinking Stardust would be a bad option because of range. That's why. It's like, why would Stardust be a bad option here? Because Gauss turrets are a good option. They've worked out. But why would Stardust be a bad option? It's because Stardust is half the range... That Gauss has. And with the Goliath slowing everything down, giving the Gauss plenty of time to start killing things, very good defensive option, like very good positioning here with Capricious for this contain. I mean, the attack over here didn't really do much, but at that point, I mean, Capricious was right to ignore this, because Felthos, like, it was right to ignore this, and then go down to the southeast to make sure that Felthos could not take the southeast, because Felthos had fortified this so much that it wasn't really worth it. I mean, the Ravagers, it was kind of worth it, and that was good reason for the Goliath, they're capricious, because that left the Ravagers open to go out elsewhere. They didn't have to be protecting the contain. That was really clever, though. I actually haven't really seen Gauss turrets used very much at all. I liked that play. I really liked that play. Like, Goliath, to slow it down, Gauss turrets to just finish it off. Because the Goliath is dealing some damage, but it doesn't have a whole lot of splash. There's... Yeah, 60 normal area of effect, that's nominal. That's basically just there so that when the projectile hits, it doesn't have to hit precisely. It just has to hit. That's basically just hit. Just lets it hit. But the Gauss turret's there on top of that. Very smart play there. I like that. And then the Tremor came in, which is just what I expected to have happen. Because with this force in this corridor, the Tremor was a really good idea. Like a general good idea, but Capricious knew what they were doing with the Goliath, and I respect that a lot. I think actually in one of the first games I casted with Capricious, they tried using Goliath, and it didn't work out. If I recall correctly, that was on... I think so. I want to say it was Capricious. It was on Altier Crossing, but I can't remember for sure if it was Capricious. Yeah, I think it was Capricious versus Spartacus, actually. Which, they used Goliath, as I recall, but it didn't work out for them. Which was kind of sad. I think it was... I think so. I want to say they switched to Heavy Tank for Goliath. Yeah, they did, and it didn't work out at all. 
So that was... This was a much better demonstration. This is showing what Capricious does with Heavy Tank. They know what they're doing with Proxy Heavy Tank Factory. And on a map like this, it is a perfect choice, especially given the contain, especially given this corridor, and especially given the Gauss turret defense thing. That was... I mean, that was kind of a trap in a sense that Felthos walked into. I just... I'm gushing over that play. That was such a good play. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. That's kind of a neat setup for Gunship Start and the Crasher coming in too. Like that early Crasher was such a good choice, getting rid of the Banshees. Really kind of forced Felthos' hand, although Felthos switching to Hovercraft. I think what they were trying to do was get some harassment in. They got some harassment in, that was good. And of course, light vehicles have a bit of a tricky time dealing with daggers. They don't have the best time. There was a lot of discussion after the last game I did that was light vehicle versus hovercraft about how they deal with it. And I'm not really sure, especially daggers. The general just the general consensus was don't deal with them, just avoid them and do other stuff. Don't worry about them. Because if they try to attack you, the daggers will die. The only thing the daggers have is being able to hit and run. But if they actually try to go for a direct attack, the scorchers can just kill them. So that seemed to be the consensus. At any rate, hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be it for me tonight and until next Tuesday because, as I mentioned last Saturday, I'm going to be in Chicago from Thursday to Monday, so I'm not going to be doing any casts over the weekend. There will be the Dark Souls episodes because I've got the backlog, but there's not going to be any Zero K casts or Skullgirls casts or anything because I'm going to be at Combo Breaker. So... Till next Tuesday, have a good night. Be a long, week-long night. <laughs>